We have with us today Attorney General John Ashcroft to talk about the realities of what does happen when language like this is instituted in a state. In his state, and he was governor, he signed into law language that, was, uh, that is very similar to, the, to this language in Measure 1 and has had 30 years of experience with that law in place in the state of Missouri. So he'll be able to talk to us about what really happens, how it works, and what the effects were on the citizens. Attorney General John Ashcroft, thank you. Let me just say this, that I am not here to tell North Dakotans how to vote. I think North Dakotans know how to vote and can know how to vote and will make good decisions. I just believe that they deserve to have facts that are accurate about the outcomes of their votes rather than propaganda and scare tactics that might otherwise keep them from making the decisions that they would intelligently arrive at based on facts and circumstances. I know it's hard for you to believe that someone as young as I am was governor 30 years ago, but it's just right at 30 years. And I'd had the privilege of signing into law the measure which is outlawed for Missouri uh, on, on your right and on my left. And uh, that has been a part of a variety of uh, discussions, including, of course, that particular law was uh, reviewed by the United States Supreme Court. Uh, in what is known as the Webster decision. Let me just say that in 30 years of its operation, none of the so-called horrible consequences that have been discussed or suggested that would relate to your virtually identical proposal here in North Dakota has materialized. Uh, some people have raised the issue of whether in vitro fertilization could take place were the people of North Dakota to embrace this suggestion of the legislature here. And the truth of the matter is in Missouri over the last 30 years, we've had thousands and thousands of cases of in vitro fertilization. As a matter of fact, in the last several years, we've had thousands in the last three years. Uh, so, and uh, I happen to have a little awareness of what's happened in Arkansas, which is our next door neighbor. They have a similar provision in their law, and there has been no s significant curtailment of these kinds of rights or opportunities like in vitro fertilization in Arkansas. I think the last year I saw for Arkansas had dozens and dozens of cases of in vitro fertilization. A second item that has been raised as a question about whether this kind of language would result in the shrinking the liberty of people to express themselves as to how they would be cared for or should be cared for in terms of their, the ending of their own lives. Do they want certain kinds of medical procedures employed and things like that? It certainly has not happened in the state of Missouri. Our law, which has the same substance as the proposal does in North Dakota, has not kept me from expressing myself as to what my desires are, and my wife and I both have expressed ourselves in legal documents that we expect to be carried out in our state, and we find no impairment or incapacity in these kinds of provisions that would prevent people from making those kinds of reasonable decisions. A third uh, uh, item that has been mentioned by those who, who uh, I have entered the discussion in opposition to this measure has been that there would, could be problem pregnancies and a remediation of significant emergency procedures that would be necessary to the health of individuals uh, if, if this were to be embraced. Well, let me just say that that has not been the case in the state of Missouri. Uh, we have not had any problem in dealing with problem pregnancies, and I mean pregnancies that threaten the health and security and safety of the mother and the family and, and the like. I, I've, we've had family members uh, in my family that have gone through very, very serious situations in that respect, and uh, they have not been inhibited in their ability to make choices based on their preferences and upon their medical situation by the provisions of the Missouri law. So it was with that in mind that I just want to share what I believe the real outcomes are and the potentials are and to have an opportunity to say to you that 
none of the parade of horrors, none of the terrible outcomes that have been forecast has been realized in the state of Missouri. And the last point I would make is that this is a laudable statement about a policy and the respect for human dignity and the dignity of human life. This really is a, a provision that states a policy of the state, the state of North Dakota. And a similar statement was made for the state of Missouri and the Supreme Court of the United States approved the idea that the state of Missouri's legislature could make such a statement properly to guide the interpretation of its laws and statutes. Now, it seems to me to be a even, an even stronger case that the United States Supreme Court would honor the will of the people, not just the will of the legislature, if the will of the people were to be expressed in saying how laws should be interpreted, but this is not a law to be enforced in and of itself. It's a guideline for restoring to the people of North Dakota the right in the interest of human dignity and the safety and well-being of maternal health and the like to make reasonable regulations similar to the partial birth abortion regulations made by the United States Congress, which also passed the muster of the United States Supreme Court. It's with that in mind that I would come and share with you the experience that I have from my responsibilities in the state, that in vitro fertilization has not been outlawed, it has not been impaired. Thousands of successful cases that have resulted in wonderful children being born. And obviously, as a pro-life person, I am interested in children being born. Uh, problem pregnancies have not been uh, uh, made difficult to remediate in a medical sense. As a matter of fact, we have had no difficulty in that respect. Uh, end of life decision making has not been curtailed in, in any respect to my knowledge, at least in my own personal case, I've been free to do what I think reasonable people want to be able to do, and that's to think carefully about measures they would want taken and to be able to leave instructions so that they themselves are controlling rather than have decisions made by others. I thank you for welcoming me here, and I wish you the very best in your endeavors to do in self-governance the thing that free people ought to do. God bless you. Thank you.